Hi guys, this is Anna. Uh, I'm just going to go over a slideshow of the Day of the Dead because I'm still not used to video and so I think this is a little bit easier for me to explain. So I don't know if you've ever heard of the Day of the Dead before but um, it's a really big um, celebration all over Mexico uh, and as you know I spent it in Querétaro. Um, but in general, Day of the Dead is a day in which people honor family members or important people of history that have died and um, one of the big sort of elements of the celebration is these altars that people set up in their homes or in public plazas. And this picture here is an example of a humongous altar that they set up in one of the big squares in the historic center of Querétaro. Um, it's dedicated to the heroes of the Mexican independence movement, at least the ones that were from Querétaro. And you will see that there's like some pictures in the back. Well, those pictures are there because they believe that in order for the spirits to be able to make it back home um, from like the night of November 1st to November 2nd, uh, they need to recognize themselves. And so that's why the pictures are there. You also see that there's candles, and the candles sort of mark the path to back home. And also the flowers, um, they, they give off a very pleasant scent that also attracts the spirit back home. In addition to all of that, the altar has a lot of different items that each of those people would have enjoyed during their life. And that also helps them remember um, their earthly life. And actually the style of the altars are all really different. Like this other picture is in another plaza in the Querétaro's historic center. And the drawings on the floor are made, I think, of colored sand. And they're actually uh, taking advantage of the steps that are, you know, in the monument to the Corregidora, one, uh, an important woman in the independence movement in Querétaro. And you can see that in, in this case they have like different offerings than on the on the other one. They have, you can see there's like some round sort of bread, like huge pieces, loaves of bread. Th that's called pan de muerto. It's like bread of the dead. Um, and that's really typical. They also have lots of food and they have lots of flowers. And the next picture um, which actually this was taken at my host niece's uh, elementary school and even in schools they, they set up these little altars and again um, they have they have it dedicated to the heroes of the independence movement and that's just because this year they've been celebrating the bicentennial which means like the 200 years of the Mexican independence and so they have um, like uh, traditional or typical foods that, you know, Mexican foods, I guess, they have sort of like painted uh, and glittered skulls and they have these toy rifles and um, probably a bottle of tequila. I don't know. Anything that is associated to Mexico, I guess, in this case. And the kids set it up at school. But there's other kinds of altars, like this one, which is just flat and it's like a circle on the ground and it has candles. I guess it was more like the indigenous version and so it has the candles and then it also in the center has sort of like a cup and that would be where they burn incense which along with the flowers would be used to attract the spirits but not all of the altars are huge so this little altar is set up at my host family's house and the lady in the picture is actually well she would be like my host grandmother but she passed away several years ago um, and so I guess some things that aren't in the other altars are like a glass of water, which water, you know, represents life, the salt represents the earth, um, light, you know, is what guides the, the spirit's home, and as well as this picture, and there's like the little cup for the incense, um, but you can also see that there's like these little decorated skulls, and those are actually made of sugar, and they're really cool, they're, they're kind of like exchanged in the way valentines are exchanged in in the states 
So, like, kids in school might, you know, bring their little friends or something, you know, a little skull, and, and sometimes you can even have, like, your name, or the name of the person you're giving it to, like, scribbled on the, on the forehead. And I thought it was a little weird, but they actually say it, it's fun. It's not like, you know, you're getting, like, a death wish from someone. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's a, that's a really cool tradition. And I actually got ones, but, um, from a friend, but they were in chocolate. You can actually eat the cho- well, obviously the chocolate skulls, but you can also eat the sugar skulls. Um, now, so people set these altars on the night or the day of November first, um, but the actual day of the dead is on November second, and so the party really starts at the cemetery. And that's where I had filmed my video, but the cemetery is just like something totally different from like anything I'd ever seen. I mean, it's huge and it's crowded, and like here you can see there's like stalls, you know, with vendors of flowers, and there's food, any possible food you could, well, not any possible food, but some of the typical foods. And they have like these great snacks, like you know, slices of cucumber with chili, and they have um, cut uh, watermelon, and they have potato chips with chili, and they have jicama and all sorts of goodies, and they also have some really good drinks. And you can buy these throughout the day because it gets kind of hot in the cemetery. Um, and here in this picture you can see just how crowded it is. And and it's also, I guess you can start to see what some of the graves look, look like. They're kind of, a, I guess, a little different from the way they are in the U.S. Um, I guess there's lots of tiles, and some of them have like like these pits where it's almost like a raised bed and so you can't plant stuff in them. Many people have like pictures of the Virgin Mary or um, different saints that that they like and oh, any sort of other interesting objects that they want to put on their family members' graves. Um, they also have an altar, and this was a really cool one because I guess it was a little bit more traditional, and then it just had food. So, for instance, they have ears of corn, which are known in Mexico as elote. They had potatoes and something like looks like yams. They also had um, tamarind and like the fruit of the cactus, which is called tuna, not like the fish. I mean, like the fish, but it's not the fish. It's it's actually tuna and it's quite sweet just it has lots of seeds but it's really good and that's a typical offering this is the pan de muerto which is like the bread of the dead and it just has a name because you can see like there's like these little I don't know like round ball or knuckly looking things and that's just I guess it symbolizes like a little little bones or something and it's it's good it has a lot of sugar though um, also, you know, the picture of the Virgin of Guadalupe is always there throughout Mexico, everywhere you look. And they have some much larger, like, sugar skulls, the candles and spices and all sorts of other things. So, I guess we, uh, for Peace Corps, we have, like, something called a cultural passport, so, you, you know, you have to go out and do activities. And everyone was really looking forward to, to this day. And so, you know, not surprisingly, we ran into some other groups of volunteers, and basically we were sort of like coming with a mission. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, mo- many people go back to the cemetery on November 2nd, and they try to fix up their family members' graves, kind of like a once-a-year thing, I guess. Um, but not everyone makes it to the cemetery. So some people, you know, take it upon themselves to go in and fix up their um, well, some, like, forgotten graves or something. And that's what these guys were doing. They had a bucket and and soap and scrubbing things, and and so they, they cleaned off one. And basically they just then gave me the bucket, and I got some flowers, and we headed out to pick up our abandoned grave. And so um, we walked to the, like, very far end of the cemetery, which, um, as, I guess as you go further in, like, it becomes... I guess less built up. It's you know, it's more like a garden of sorts, like this one in the picture. And um, those little mounds, it's, they just make it look like, you know, they just buried someone. But there's there's no one buried like on top like that. 
they would be down in a, in a hole. But, um, you know, people bring, bring flowers, and in some cases, like in this one, um, at some point they planted an agave plant, and the agave just grew to be huge, and now they kind of stick flowers inside the agave wherever they fit. But that's an actual grave, and so it's not an uncommon thing. But I was very surprised with it, actually. Um, so this is the grave that we sort of adopted, and it belongs to a lady who I have never met and have no idea how she died and I hope it was a good death or something but we decided that because there was some shade <laughs> over her grade that we were going to do her the favor um, of sprucing it up however um, uh, my, my little bucket of tools didn't come with a shovel so when I saw that grass and and all sorts of other things on the grave, I thought this is going to take a really long time, but it's actually kind of interesting because there's all sorts of people walking around the cemetery providing services, like everyone from like people offering water to like selling you flowers to food. Like there's even mariachi and other musicians like offering to like sing to the to the to the dead person. Um, and well, one of the people that that came around us was a lady who had a shovel and you know you could just give her whatever you wanted for the for the job um, but she cleaned up in a really um, short minute or two and it looked awesome so we prepared all the flowers and then you know kind of arranged them in a cross because I guess I wasn't really that creative but a cross seemed to be the easiest thing to sort of try to create and I think it looks actually pretty nice and then of course before leaving we said a couple of words and you know hope that we did a, a good thing but I confess I was actually really scared that all of a sudden like the real family would just show up and say hey what are you doing with with my my grave and who knows maybe it wouldn't be a bad thing but it would certainly have been awkward so um I guess any other interesting things to talk about Day of the Dead is that there was a huge sort of garage sale going on around it and no one was working that day. Um, but it, it was fun and it was interesting to see um, how Mexicans sort of approach, you know, this concept of death and their family members. And, you know, certainly some people um, really do believe in this. You know, they, they do think that the spirit comes back to Earth and so they take it very seriously. Other people, um, they just do it for cultural reasons, you know, so maybe sometimes like their religion doesn't really allow this kind of practice, but because it's part of the culture of the country, you know, they, they participate in it in, in some way. Maybe not going to the cemetery, but, you know, maybe creating an altar that's sort of unique. Like at Peace Corps, we had a uh, one dedicated to Elvis Presley, and so that, that was, I guess, fun, and, you know, you get to experience it firsthand. So that's pretty much all I have, and I hope you like it, and if you have any questions, I'd, I'd be happy to answer them. And also, if, if you know of any similar celebrations in other parts of the world or where you live, it'd be kind of cool to, to know about that, too. Well, thanks for listening.